Okay, so over in Legacy, now I'm using uh, version 7.4 here. Let's open up a screen here. Let's open up Asa Brown's uh, data entry screen, and we do that just by clicking. And I'm going to make the screen a little bit larger for you. Now, some of you that, that have used Legacy, you know, or you might have run across uh, an error message when you're typing in a place. Now, Asa was born in the year 1792, but just to demonstrate this, I'm going to change this to something like the year 1670. And when I click the tab button, here you'll see that I get a message. This tells me that Wyndham County did not exist in 1670 in the state of Connecticut. It was not founded until 1726. So as you're doing your actual data entry, now again, this is we're still with the U.S. We'll move move to the rest of the world soon. Um, as you're doing your data entry in Legacy, this is going to warn you if the county that you've typed in for that time period just didn't happen to exist. Uh, the same thing, let's put this back to the right year, so back to 1792. Let's say that I happen to misspell the name of the county, so Wyndham. I'm going to get a message from Legacy that tells me there was never a county by that name in Connecticut. And in parentheses, we, we uh, suggest that you should check the spelling or uh, go and check your research. You'll see that we also have this, this button here that says Show County List. This will give you uh, the big database of all of the counties along with the states, when the, when the county started, when it ended, and then if there's any other information about it. So the currently highlighted county of Deal County, Delaware, you can see that Legacy tells you that it changed its name to Sussex in the year 1682. So as you're doing your data entry, uh, my golden rule is to enter the place as it existed at the time of the event. So, for example, if if uh, let's let's move let's move to Asa's son David, who was born in 1846 in Pennsylvania. On a modern day map, the place where he was born, uh, Deerfield, Pennsylvania. On today's map, this is in Forest County. The problem with me typing this in uh, with using Forest County for this time period is that it just simply did not exist. David Brown was not born in Deerfield Forest County. So Legacy warns me that. It tells me it wasn't founded until 1848. So for me to know exactly what county it was for that time period, that's where Animap comes in. So I would open up Animap, plot Deerfield, change the year to the year that he was born, and it would tell me that at that time period, Deerfield would have been in Warren County. Again, now that I know that, now I, I know what jurisdiction to look for the records. This, uh, this checking, or this checker that we've, we've seen here, uh, this is still just available for the United States. I can't wait for that day when that will work for the entire world. Uh, what a project that will be. Now, one more thing. I'm going to show you a report here in Legacy. And this is found by clicking on the Reports menu, or the Reports button. And then you click on the tab here that says Books slash Other. The last button here in this column, it says USA County Verifier. I'll click on Preview to look at this report. And I'll zoom in just a bit. Okay, I've got a few errors here. This, what this has done is it's gone through my entire database of all the names, dates, and places I've previously entered. And now, now it's giving me this report for those counties that I've entered for the U.S. that just didn't exist. So uh, this first one, there was never a county by that name. So I've misspelled this name. Uh, David Clark Brown, that's the person we just changed uh, to Forest County, and it's showing that in my report here. Mary Cummings, I, I have recorded that she was born in 1725 in Woodstock, Wyndham County. Legacy tells me this didn't exist, well, until the, the next year, until 1726. Boy, what a powerful research tool this is for U.S. researchers 
uh, this this report right here might alone solve many of your 30-year brick walls. Okay, so this is this is legacy. Now some of you are asking about the the mapping in legacy. So let's go there, and then we're going to move to Centennia. Okay, so legacy's mapping is accessed by clicking on the mapping button here in the toolbar at the top. So I'll click on the mapping button. Now you have to be lo uh, you have to be connected to the internet for this to work for you. Um, you'll see that, well this is Asa Brown and this is showing you a list of all of the places that he has lived throughout his life and so it's going to instantly plot all of those places here on the map. Now if he lived over in in Germany or Denmark it's going to uh, plot those in, uh, on, on those maps as well. You'll notice that if you hover your mouse over the balloon that it will tell you exactly what events were happening in that place. Double clicking on one of the balloons will zoom in for you. And I'm, I'm not going to zoom in all the way because I know it takes a lot of uh, internet bandwidth uh, to be able to show this to you. Uh, but you can zoom in all the way uh, here at the top. You can click on the 3D button which will kind of give you the view that Google Earth has. Also here in the list on the left if you click on the place, you'll see that the corresponding balloon will be highlighted or change its color in blue there on the right. I'm going to zoom out. Here's my rule or, or why I think using legacy mapping is so vitally important. Every time I type in a new place for a person, like for example, let's say that I found Asa Brown uh, living in you know, on, on, in San Francisco, California. If I type that in, then, San, then uh, of course, Legacy would, would plot that all the way over here on the left. Now, something would, I don't know, to, to, to me, that might show me that uh, something doesn't quite fit in. Ace has spent his entire life over here in this area. He actually ended his life in Minnesota, but let's just say, for example, I find some uh, database on the internet that says Asa Clark Brown was uh, graduated from high school in San Francisco, California. And so, on uh, for some reason, I'm I'm not really thinking clearly, and I think, well, that's got to be my guy, right? It's the same name, so I type that into Legacy, and then I I come and I look at this map. And I can see that that balloon all the way in San Francisco, California, uh, seems a little bit odd to be over there. So my rule is whenever I type in a new place, I go and look at the map just to make sure that things make sense. Okay, let's close this down. We can have a whole other hour-long discussion just on uh, mapping and location tools in Legacy. Uh, we'll do that for a, another webinar. I'm going to close down Legacy, and let me just take a look at your questions and see if there are Legacy ones related to what we've just been talking about. Oh, good. Somebody asked about uh, my who is my relative in Ontario, Canada. Well, open up Legacy's sample database and go to Eleanor Huffman, and I've got her birth date in there. If, you, if all your research is done, then, then you can help me look for her. So thanks, Fred. <laughs> a question uh, re related to Legacy and Animap. Is there a direct link from Legacy to Animap? Uh, there is not. I love your idea, though. We'll, we'll keep those uh, for future possible development. Thank you, uh, Linda, for that question. Uh, we'll close this or minimize this now. I want to switch over to Centennia. Let's turn now to uh, the to Europe and the Middle East. Centennia is a software developed by oh, by another company. I don't recall their name uh, right off. Um, but it was developed to help you see the changing country boundaries over time. Let me, let's start off by just going to the year 2000. So this is what this part of Europe looked like in, in well, today, uh, in the year 2000. If you move the map around, 
And you do that by pressing the Alt button, and then you can just drag. You'll be able to see the other countries here. But I want to focus in on on this area. This is the area that I have a really hard time with trying to understand all the changing country boundaries between Germany and Poland and Prussia. And uh, it just seems that uh, in my in my uh, family research anyways that uh, it just goes back and forth and and sometimes you're not quite sure and so that's the that's the point of using the Centennia software so currently we're looking at the year 2000 let's just take this back to the year 1800 and I do this by in the very far upper left hand corner that's where I can type in a year so when you type in the year that you want press the enter button and in just a minute it will uh, refresh so at that time period, you can see that, that Germany is, uh, is not uh, an official entity, uh, but you can see Prussia, Bohemia.